Hello and welcome to the Compress New User training video. My name is Christian and today we'll be walking through an example of how to use Compress, which includes navigating the software, building our pressure vessel model, and generating a report. Now to get started, I want to show you how to create a new file by selecting File, New in the upper left hand corner of the screen. From here, we can select either a Division 1 or Division 2 pressure vessel or shell and tube heat exchanger. Now these options that are available to you may depend on the modules you have available. Now I'm going to start here with a Division 1 vessel. Once I create this new file, I'll have my modeling space here in the center where I'll be building the model. But before we go and add all of our components, I first want to start on the left hand side of the screen with my specification sheet data. Now this data allows us to enter in information about the project and location, as you'll see here under general information. This information, such as the location uh, purchaser, can be added to the cover of your report as well by checking this option. We'll talk a little bit in more detail about that later. If you do need to add additional information, you can add additional descriptions or remove the descriptions that are here using these icons. Next, we'll jump down into our code requirements where we have the ability to change the file type that we're working with, whether it's a pressure vessel or a shell and tube heat exchanger. Uh, from there, we'll be able to switch between the modes that we can operate compress in. So the first mode here is gonna be design mode and design mode is gonna automatically increase the thickness of certain components based on your pressure and temperature requirements. Now there are some cases such as a re-rate or analyzing an existing design where we don't want the software to automatically make changes for us. Now in order to turn off design mode, we can switch to rating mode, and this will allow us to run those analysis. Now I'm gonna switch back to design mode for this example. From here, we can then select the units that we'll be working with, whether it's US customary or SI units. It's very easy to switch back and forth at any time. Next, we can choose the division that we're working with, whether it's division one, or Division 2, Class 1 or Class 2, as well as the ASME Code Edition. You'll note here that we have previous code editions going back to 1995. If we have a wind or seismic code that we need to take into consideration with our design, we can add that using the three buttons here or through the codes menu at the top. When we select either wind or seismic, we will be able to select the code that's available either from the ASCE, IBC, NBC Canada, or UBC. There's also a user defined option available as well for both wind and seismic. From here, we can also change the orientation of our vessel, whether we're working with a vertical or horizontal vessel, from there, we'll move down into our design requirements. From here, we'll be able to select the material that we're working with. Now, these material schemes are gonna set the general spec for the material for each component. As you can see, by adding your own material scheme, you can specify the material that's used for each component. And that can be different whether you're working in division one or division two, or if you're using customary versus metric units. Um, so lots of options here. As you can see in this drop-down list, we have some default material schemes that you can use. I'll just start with carbon steel for this example. Next, we'll enter in the inner diameter of our vessel. If we would prefer to use the outer diameter, we can change this in our options. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. But if we continue through, our design requirements, we'll have to enter in our internal pressure and temperature as well as the external pressure and temperature. One thing to note with external pressure is if you do not need to consider a vacuum case or external pressure condition, if you set this value equal to zero, we will exclude the external pressure calculations in the report. We don't have to worry about our external temperature either. 
Now, if we have any corrosion allowances that we need to consider, we can add them for the inside and outside surface, as well as our minimum design metal temperature here. Next, if we'd like to consider any cladding for the entire vessel, we can do that here. If you do have cladding just on specific components, I do recommend adding cladding later in the design process. Now for our hydro test or our testing options here, you will be able to choose from a couple of options here, which include hydro or pneumatic testing, as well as a user defined test pressure as well. So if you're working with the pressure equipment directive or the PED, you'll be able to set that higher test pressure that's required. Also, if you need to change the orientation in which your vessel is going to be tested, you can enter that information here.